And I know it's set right because I just um, interviewed Ellen Marie. Okay. So, I'm Barbara Garrity Blake talking to Pam Morris here at the Corsound Museum. It's April Fool's Day, 2016. And Pam and I are going to talk a little bit about the vessel called the Alfonso. So Pam, will you, will you just give us a little background of what, what you know as far as the history of that boat? What I know about the Alfonso is it belonged to my great-grandfather um, and his son, my grandfather, and they had it built as a freight boat, and it was used as such. It used to run in New Bern, and I'd hear Grandma would talk about the Alfonso going to New Bern and and then it was sold and used as a, well, I don't know if it was sold or not. I think it was still in the family. I think my um, grandfather's brother used it as a Menhaden boat. But anyway, so after it was retired... Then, Wait, before we get to that, though, what was your grand great grandfather's name that had it built? My great grandfather's name that was Doche Davis. They called everybody called him Doche. I didn't even know what his first name was. It was just Doche, and my grandfather's name was Blanchard Davis, and that was on Daddy's da Davis side. Um, so, do you know where the Alfonso was built? It was built in Williston, and I don't remember the guy that built it. Huh. Or whatever. Do you know about what year? What decade? Turn of the century. It's probably in the teens. Um, but I I don't know for sure. Yeah. I really don't. Um, you can always consult Wayne Willis's story. Yeah, I will. Yeah. But did your grand great grandfather and grandfather then run what did they run? They ran to? freight between New Bern and Beaufort. Oh. And they would, you know, stop off goods at all these stores up and down the way and what was the route from Beaufort to Newburn back then well it's pretty much the same route as it is now except you had to go further because how, how I didn't go? even because the thoroughfare wasn't there in those days you had to go around Cedar Island at the Noose River yeah so now there's a canal from Beaufort where you can cut a across but back then didn't they have to go through straits and all the way around no, uh, I don't think they went. Well, they may have. I don't know what they did yeah. exactly. I don't, I don't but when they I just, out. I just recall them going out around Cedar Island and up the river, the Noose River to Newburn. Okay. Because there was no. Because if you look where Davis is, you're not going to go south all the way down through Straits and go back north. No, that is. You're just going to head north and go around Cedar Island Beach. And go up, because you're in the Noose River then. I got gotcha. you. know, and so all you got to do is go up the Noose River. You're, you know, across the South River um, and just head up the Noose River. Yeah. And so that's what they did, and they would be gone from what was said about it a week, you know, and or, or however long it took them, generally a week of making a route or whatever. And so... Did they stop anywhere on the way? Well, I guess it depends on what they had on the boat going that way. Yeah. Um, I, I know they used to haul watermelons. That's all I know uh, for sure that they haul because I heard stories about them hauling water watermelons. And my um, Aunt Carolyn always loved watermelons. I always attributed it to, you know, growing up on watermelons. So mm -hmm. I love watermelons myself. She used to go out of her way in later years to go to Boat Sound to get real Boat Sound watermelons for the 4th of July. Ah. So, anyway, that's a foolish story, but that's why I remember. Why are you doing Because I'm picking that up. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I'm too fidgety for actual I interviews. I do it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So, um, so, the boat was originally called the Alfonso? Yes. I wonder why they it. was named always it. Alfonso. Do you know how, why they named it that? I, I'm assuming from a family member. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not, you know, no expert on it, but I, I'm assuming a family member. Yeah. I'm sure it is. 
But, you know, we were talking about my great-grandfather, and that was way before me. So, it wasn't ever said. I mean, people didn't sit around and discuss who boats were named for. Yeah. You know, or at least my people didn't. Of course, my people uh, didn't really talk a whole lot about themselves anyway. So, that just wasn't done. (laughs) So... But Grandmama used to tell a lot of stories about it. Of course, that was her husband's family. She was a Paul. And so, yeah. Hmm. But this was the Davises I'm talking about. Okay. And the Davises, or my one half of Davises, are a closed mouth bunch. (laughs) Now, you can interview Daddy, and he can tell you a lot more about it, because he knows all about it. Really? And he loves to discuss stuff like that. Okay. But... Cool. You know. All right, so what happened to the Alfonso after it was a freight boat? Well, it was a Menhaden boat, and Wayne Willis that we referred to earlier, his, he, he and my daddy are first or second cousins. I think they're second cousins on his mother's side. And his, apparently his mother's, his mother's brother, his mother's father, was the brother of Daddy's daddy. Um, his name was Robert. Robert Willis. And it was it was Blanchard Davis and and Robert Davis, who was Kendall I misspoke and called him a Willis, but he was actually a Davis. And their father was Doche. So when they built the Alfonso and it became a freight boat, I am sure that Robert and Blanchard worked on the boat with their father. But um, when it became a Menhaden boat, I do not believe that my grandfather worked on it when it was a Menhaden boat. Okay. Because he <coughs> he was a carpenter, and a hunting guide, and a decoy carver, and mainly a carpenter, and made furniture and stuff like that. So um, he fished some. I know that he did fish commercially some for crabs um, because daddy, my daddy, is a mechanical engineer. And uh, anyway, he was fishing with his father. And a blue freeze came up the sound, and it got real, you know, weather got bad quick and all this, and turned turned real cold. What's a blue freeze? And he said... What's a blue freeze? A blue freeze? Yeah. A blue freeze is a front that comes through in the winter that's really cold. And it just, you can see it coming. You, You know how you can see clouds on the edge of a front, how... Defined looking and blue looking they are. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. Yeah, in the winter especially. I've just never heard of it. You can just see it. I mean, a lot of people, at least around Davis, call it a blue freeze. Yeah. I mean, anyway, a blue freeze came and they were crabbing with trot mines and like to be drowned trying to get across the course down back to Davis Shore. And he said, I will never, ever do this for a living. (laughs) (laughs) And he didn't. And none of his brothers did either. <laughs> but um, that was it. That was, that was it. your father. Yeah. Yeah. Now he loved it. He he would go fishing, you know, messing around or setting some nets or flounder gigging or whatever. But he he weren't gonna make no living at it. Yeah. Did he like work his at Cherry daddy. Point? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He he worked at Cherry Point and his uh, almost his entire career. Mm-hmm. His beginning uh, his career he worked in the shipyard in Newport News. He worked on. Uh, the aircraft carrier, the Enterprise, that was his first job, was uh, being an engineer on the Enterprise, so, or one of the boats that he worked on, at least, so, uh, but long story short, he was not not a fisherman, Mm -hmm. but my grandfather was some, and, like I say, but mainly he was a carpenter after he quit the freight boat, that was always my understanding, and he built my grandmama's house, And did he build boats? I think yes. I think he did <laughs> not on his own, but he helped other people build boats because they built boats in Davis. 
I'm sure every community had people who built boats. So, um, he built boats. The boat house was not very far from uh, his house, him and my grandmama's house, just right down the road. Um, it was, everybody referred to it as Ray LeMay's boat house. I remember, it was going on when I was in the 70s. Really? It never shut down. Ray LeMay's boat house never shut down until the 70s. What was, who was Ray LeMay? He was from Davis. I didn't know who he was. I he, thought that I was think, a woman. So that was the last name, Ray LeMay? Yeah, LeMay's her last oh, name. Oh, LeMay. Yeah. I oh, think I'm sorry. Uh, Ray LeMay. Ray LeMay. Ray's, um, there are not many LeMay's around. And I know that Dean, um, Dean Smith, Janice's Dean, his daughter's married to a LeMay boy. So I'm mm -hmm. sure they must be kin, but I don't know how exactly. Huh. So, so I really don't know. I'm not a fount of information when it comes right, to that. But, so the Alfonso was originally a sailing Yeah, vessel. it was a sailing boat, yeah. Was it a schooner? It I was think? a schooner. And then uh, when they started Menhaden fishing, do you think they... <clears throat> it was a, sh you know... It was a, a hull was like a, based upon a Sharpie style hull. Okay. But it was rigged for, as a schooner. Okay. So. And when it turned into a Menhaden vessel, do you, I wonder if they powered it. They did. Okay. When it was turned into, or according to Wayne's, you know, research, and, and he would know. I mean, his daddy was on the boat. They, they converted it to gas in the 20s. And fished it as a Menhaden boat under steam. Because there was, you know, there were shack factories, as as it were, you know, up and down, down east. You know, Smyrna, Davis. Davis may, had more than one. There was one in Davis Ridge, and there was another one on to the Oyster Creeks. So, you know, and, and I'm sure there were other ones on further down. I didn't really know anything about any other community except Davis and, and some more recently about Smyrna. So. so when was the first time you saw the Alfonso? Well, when I saw the Alfonso, I was a kid and it was a whaling museum. <laughs> Beach because when they retired the boat, i.e. it was probably starting to rot, um, they gave it to Graydon Paul who was my grandmama Florence Paul Davis's first cousin. And so Graydon wanted it to make a museum out of it. So they gave it to him, and he did. He beached it in Beaufort, on the waterfront in Beaufort. That was ahead of all these docks and whatnot that they've got down there now. And if you walk down far enough, you can see where they did it, you know. It just had that little breakwater you know, that little shell, oyster shell breakwater there. And and it was beached, and you could uh, just walk right to it and get on it. And they had all kinds of little artifacts and whale bones and bottles and, you know, had signs in it, and, and you were just crawling all through the boat, you know. It wasn't unlike the oyster and exhibit at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum, where that's what you're doing, is you're getting... And crawling through the bowels of the boat, you know. And that's how this was. So that must have been what? It was the, really charming. Was that in the 70s? 60s. In the 60s, okay. It was in the 60s. I was a young kid then. And so, I mean, I was born in 62. We moved here when I was five. So this was like 68 ish. Where from? I was born in Newport News, Virginia. Because Daddy. Worked uh, for, you know, his first job was at the shipyard. Oh, okay. And uh, he and Mama were married by then, and my brother and I were both born in Newport News. I never knew that. I know, most people don't. It's kind of amusing, isn't it? In a, You're a, in a small way. I'm a, I'm a ding back. <laughs> I'm a sore back. I'm going to start That's that. what they call Virginians. I mean, that's what the Medhaven guys used to call them, sore backs. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Carolina people are the Tar Heels, and the Virginia people are sore backs. I've heard that all my life. You're a soreback. Do you, do you, why, why a soreback? I figured it's, you know, because North Carolina with their tarry heels were walking all over them. I don't know. So, 
<laughs> that was very amusing. What a Menhaden uh, captain told me was because whereas the Tarials <laughs> stand their ground, the Virginia men fall flat on their face and let everybody, <laughs> let the armies walk them. right over them, run over them, so they're sore back. So I don't know. Well, that could be. <laughs> that could be, could be not. I don't know. But so uh, when you were a little girl and you're on the Alfonso, did you did you did you know that that was your family's boat? I did, yes, I did, because my grandmama, Daddy's mama, made sure that all of us kids knew such things, and Mama told me to. I mean, you know, my mother stayed at home, thankfully, and when we lived, we lived in Beaufort until we built our house in Smyrna. So we lived in Beaufort for four years, out in 101, across some a Memorial Gardens, you know where that is? I do. And so we lived in the gray house that's across the road, and went to school to Beaufort until, you know, I was in third grade, I think. So she would take us, like, every, you know, at least once a week, we would go to the library, which was at the old train depot, which is now the meeting place, you know, it's a meeting place or whatever. And so we go to the library and we go get something to eat and then we would go to the Alfonso or the Alfonso was there. That was the precursor to the Hampton, no, it was a Mariner's Museum, but there was a name for it and it was on Turner Street um, so this and is before the North Carolina Maritime Museum. Yeah, there was no North Carolina Maritime yeah. Museum. And so it that's how like Charles the Hampton McNich, Mariners it, Museum. Yeah, like it was it was some Mariners Museum. Mm -hmm. The Hampton the Hampton Mariners Museum is in Newport News. And that was right behind our house oh. where we lived in Virginia, in Carrollton. And so when when my mother's parents would come up to see us kids, my granddaddy loved history, and he was all the time going to the Hampton Mariners Museum that was right behind our house. So he was constantly over there. That's that's the only reason why I know where it is, is because granddaddy used to love to go over there, and I don't his, remember his that. Name? His name was Leonard Davis. Okay, that was the other half of Davis's. Okay. Daddy's Davises lived down the road, and Mama's Davises lived up the road. But they were, actually came from two different branches of Davises. In Davis. In Davis. So that down the road and up the road had different political affiliations. Yes, down the roads Republican and up the roads were Democrats. And how about different churches or not? Yeah, they had different churches. Okay. The up the road crowd mainly went to the First Baptist Church, and down the road went to the Free Will Baptist Church. Okay. Now, but then the Free Will Baptists had a split, and then they became way up the road was the original Free Will Baptist. Middle way was the First Baptist, and then down the road was the Free Will Baptist. Is down the road north? South. Okay, down Johnny's. the road is south is where you used to live. Yes. And then correct. up the road is north. Yes. Okay. North and to the shore around the horseshoe. Okay. That's up the road. Okay. Excuse me, let me shut this off. Okay. Um, all right, so where exactly was the Alfonso? It was, let's see, it was down sort of around the post office, across the road from the post office. Down in there, you know where they have that little Grain Paul Park, where they call mm -hmm. Grain Paul Park. Um, it was down there. I'm pretty sure it was right across from the post office, or in between the post office and BB and T, in there somewhere where that you know uh, break water ran out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so because you you didn't, I don't recall stepping over anything to get to it. You just walked down the shore and got on it. And it had a gangway. About mid a midships, and you just got on that way, and you crawled or walked down in the belly of her, and he had made like shells and had, I don't know if it, they were portholes or if he had 
cut some windows in it, but I remember light, <clears throat> just natural light would be in there. It never had electricity or anything. Did he charge? Uh, I don't know. Well, we were family, so Paul charged us anyway. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he was doing to everybody else. Do you want to get that, Pam? I'm pause this. Uh, yeah, I better. Okay. Pause it. So, but this was Graydon Paul's museum. It wasn't a state no. or a county. It was like a private. It was just stuff that Graydon Paul had collected. <laughs> and it was like whale bones and old bottles. And, you know, of course, there was a lot of whaling that went on. It was old tools, you know, and, and whatnot. There was, I'm sure, some decoys in it. Because all that stuff, when they opened this Mariner's Museum, I think, pretty sure that's what it was called, the Mariner's Museum. Mm -hmm. Charles McNeil ran the thing. Joanne Powell worked there. So she could tell you about the early goings-on um, that Subsequent to that became the North Carolina Maritime Museum. But, but this one's on Turner Street. This one's on Turner <laughs> okay. Street, where the Crew Wine Bar is. And I know that because I remember going in those little, in the doorway, and in that picture window, they had displays. And they took all the whale bones and all that, and uh, that James Lewis collection was probably there at that time. They took I think the whale he, bones from Graydon's, from the Alfonso? Yeah, from the Alfonso. Oh. They burnt the Alfonso. It just got so rotten, you know. I mean, it was a wooden boat. This was in the 60s. You know, that, that thing was built at the turn of the 20th century. So, and there it was, an old freight boat turned an old shad boat, now a museum right. among shad boats, because the men hate right. industry was cranking then. Yeah. Do you remember that? How ironic. I know. I, I remember, I remember, well, I'll tell you what I remember about the, the men hating business and everybody who grew up here does. Because you knew when they were, uh, when they were catching fish, because you could smell them. <coughs> you could smell them, Sarah Island, I think. <coughs> but everybody, nobody cared because it was the smell of money. And there was another thing, too. And this may have been Americana of the day, but everything was shut on Wednesday. On Wednesdays in Beaufort, I don't know nothing about Moorheads. We hardly ever went to Moorhead. But in Beaufort, everything was shut. There weren't no need to go to town on no Wednesday. And everybody was working at the fish house was always my understanding of it. Why? Or, you know. But... I don't know why this is. Of course, nothing, obviously, there was Blue Laws was open on Sunday. But on Wednesdays, I remember Beaufort being closed tight as a tick. Like on Front Street. And you're saying that everybody's working at the fish house on Wednesday? That was always my understanding. That's interesting. I've never heard I that. know. Me either. Huh. It was weird. I didn't even know if that was why. I just remember Mama, because, you know, she had been living in Virginia, Newport News, where... It was pretty urban, and then you've got to move back down here. I remember her just as well fussing about how slow everybody drove. I remember that. I don't know if she was, you know, a speeder or whatever, but I remember her fussing a lot about how slow people around here drove <laughs> because she was used to living in Virginia. Yeah. So, you know. So. I wonder if it had anything to do with... Sunday school on Wednesdays, you know, or people go to church on Wednesday night. If it yeah, I don't extended think so. into the day. No, yeah. no, I I don't know why. I just think it was somehow or other related to the fishing business, but I could be wrong, very wrong. So, how was Graydon Paul? Can you Graydon Paul and my uh, grandmama were first cousins. Okay, their fathers were brothers. Okay. And so, he, I remember him very well. He used to come to my grandma's house every Sunday. And that's when people did their visiting. And I also, because, see, my grandmama raised some of her siblings and, like, half-siblings. I'm not sure how it all works, but, like, my Aunt Fanny, she raised Aunt Fanny. Um... Aunt Fanny passed away not too long. Well, I'll say within the last five, six years, she passed away. 
Um, but she helped raise her. And, oh, and Aunt Robina. And Aunt, Aunt Robina, I'll just tell you a quick story. They're, they're a very interesting bunch. And I know this has nothing to do with what do you, you spell, ask me. How do you spell Robina? R-O-B-I-N-A, I guess. I don't know. Huh. Um, but Aunt Robina was always talked about in family. And this is Daddy's family, who, again, are very stoic people. Okay. Except for Grandmama. She loved to tell stories and everything. And, but they would always talk about Aunt Robina. And how Aunt Robina always had to be dressed up to the nines. Always dressed up. She always came on Sundays to visit my Grandmama, who helped raise her. So when she was a young woman, she left Davis and moved to New Bern. And lived at Tryon Palace. Because in those days, Tryon Palace wasn't like it is today, all restored and all this hoo-ha going on. There were apartments in the palace. Are you kidding me? People lived there. Oh, my gosh. And, and she's a single young woman living in these apartments, Tryon Palace. And she meets Mr. Barber, who was the owner and boat builder of Barber's Boat Works in New Bern. And he, I mean, they built, I, 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 I understand, fairly large ships, mm -hmm. fairly large on a North Carolina ship scale, not like a New York Harbor scale, but, yeah, you know, for, for this state and the conditions that you have to float in, fairly large watercraft, at least. Mm -hmm. So... Anyway, but Barbara's Boat Works was located right beside Tryon Palace. So, apparently, they got to meet somehow that way. But she married him, and I never knew what his first name was. Never. I don't know if I ever laid eyes on it. The man may have been dead by then. I don't know. But she, when she would come, I don't remember him, but <clears throat> it will be kind of odd... But she was a pretty independent, anyway, from what I hear. So she became Robina Barber. Yes, Robina Barber. And, but she, you know, anyway, everybody always talked about how dressed up she was. So time goes on, Aunt Robina is dead and all this. And I've got, there's three other siblings besides myself. Two sisters and a brother. Well, the middle sister... When she was even young, she loved clothes. She was a clothes horse when she was, well, not even in middle school. She was like in the fifth grade. She got Aunt Callan to buy her. A, I'll never forget. It was the cutest outfit. It was a little Liz Claiborne full matching everything. And I thought, you are nuts. Cause the rest of us, you know, couldn't care less if we matched or not. But we, but after that, everybody says she was just like Aunt Robina. <laughs> She's still just like Aunt Robina. Oh, oh my God, that's the Aunt Robina legend. That's great. I don't even know why I told you that that's story, funny. but it's a great story. That's hilarious. So, wow. yeah, they were. I think everybody's family has colorful characters in them, but uh, huh. My daddy's family especially has, uh, well, they were, you know, the Davises, that Davis, all the Davises came from one man, a Davis that showed up in about 1730-ish. And he had seven sons, all day, obviously, Davises, and he had a King's Grant. So he divided up from here to Harper's Island amongst these uh, sons. Yeah. So, you could be in Davis like Daddy's, Daddy's Davis of the sons was Joseph Davis. Joseph Davis had Davis Island. And he also was the Davis that married Mary Wicker. That was from, <laughs> from uh, Harker's Island. Which wasn't Harker's Island. It was some other cranny island. Whatever it was. Doesn't matter. Anyway, he married this girl. And uh, he was a Quaker. And the father-in-law was an Anglican. Yes. 
And they believed in holding slaves and, and all this. The Quakers were pacifists. They didn't believe in, in all this stuff. So her father would not let her inherit because she had married him. So he passed it on to their son, which was Joseph Davis. <laughs> so wow. anyway, I've always found that very amusing. That is. And then there was uh, the Nathan Davis had the Ridge property. Anybody, you know, that was he was one of the seven sons. And he had Isaiah Davis, and they had the Smyrna Holdings, and, well, Smyrna Williston, you know, right there by Davis Ridge. Yeah. Because it's titled Davis Ridge, you know, but really, you can get to Williston just as easy, maybe easier, than you can get to the community of Davis, because you got right all the way around. Mm -hmm. And the water, you know, you got to go around Benny Shore and all that way out of Tarrant Bay. You just go cut straight across Williston Creek, get Williston. You know, yeah. so <clears throat> anyway, that was Nathan Davis's people, and he established the church in Smyrna, the Missionary Baptist Church, which is the third oldest Missionary Baptist Church in North Carolina. Is that the is that little church across from Kenny Lewis? Yeah, that little yeah. church, white church there. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's been around. Wow. It's been around for probably pushing 190 years now. That's a long time. Yeah, that's long. So, huh. I don't think it's grown <laughs> in a hundred odd years. So you got this but, big Davis, and then somehow you're kin to the Pauls. Well, the Davises, you know, Mama's gang were also Davises in Davis, but her Davis line, which I can't remember which one hers is, but they were actually got land in Marshallburg, okay. and. They had some in Davis, too. But uh, my dad's dad, Blanchard Davis, married Amy Paul's daughter, Florence Paul. Okay. So that's how that occurred. Grandmama was a Paul. So I'm, I'm one half Davis, a quarter Paul, and a quarter Toller. Because I had one grandparent that was not from here. And that was my grandmother, Rosalie. She was from Lumberton. So, that's why I go on an annual, annual pilgrimage with Mama. Was she Lumby? She says not. I can, she, I can see she that She says in you. not. I can see Native American in she, you. We used to tease her about it, me and my first cousin, Annette. Oh, she'd get mad because in those days, she was a very prejudiced woman. Yeah. Extremely. Yeah. Yep. If you even even hinted at that, oh Lord, she would get him. Naturally, we tease her without any mercy whatsoever about it. <laughs> yeah. My cousin and I, oh, we gave her the devil. Said, yes, you are an Indian. <laughs> oh, she's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> and I was like, yes, you are. <laughs> but conversely, my dad's mom... Florence always contended she had Indian blood. Always. I mean, from my earliest... She was really into genealogy, and but never drove a car. And she would have, like, Hazel Paul Williams and different ones would drive around cemeteries. I mean, she'd go to... I remember her describing going to Aurora to a cemetery in Pamlico County, around Pamlico County cemeteries. Um, and she got my Uncle Archie, who was her oldest child. I mean, he even researched back and went to Wales, which is where the Davis people came from, was Wales. So he went there and did all kinds of research and dug up some bones and whatever, so to speak, um, and did did a lot of research. And Ed Pond, do you know Ed? I do. Ed Ed got a lot of his information from Uncle Archie. And because Ed's kin to me on my mother's side and Dorothy's kin to me, his wife, on daddy's side. So, huh. but in Davis, it was, you know, the Ponds, the Davises, the Styrons, some Willises, not as many Willises as some of the other communities, but there were some Willises. 
Willis was there, and there was some guy schools, hmm. but mainly Davis, mainly Davis and Steyer, hmm. and there was another one. Anyway, they had my grandmama had a little limerick about it, about the founding families of Davis. Mama could tell you I can't remember it because <laughs> I can't remember nothing. Yeah. So um, take cool. that as a given, but so just to to bring this whole talk full circle, why did the Alfonso end up going to Graydon Paul? Why did they get because he was in the family and he wanted it. He knew they were getting rid of it. But what was it about him? Because he was an unusual man. He was a storyteller, and he loved history. And he yeah, but he got all his stories from my grandmama. Yeah, I man, he go down there every Sunday. That's why. Where I mean, was he born? He was born in Davis. He was. I thought he was Beaufort. They moved to Beaufort. Okay. See, Luther Paul, Luther Paul, was his daddy. Okay. Luther was the one who who built the bumblebee, which was. Which was the first helicopter, according to some. He flew it for six seconds, and his wife was like, I will leave you if you ever get in that again. So it got put in the barn in Davis. That's where it flew was in Davis, because he lived in Davis. He also built a movie screen, a movie house thing on a barge, and he towed it around to communities. Luther Paul would. He built his own car. He made built a telephone and put in the house and ran it to the shore so his wife could call him in for supper. He had the first telephone on David Shore that he made himself. And he wrote letters and communicated with Thomas Edison. Wow. I know, isn't that weird? So he was a brilliant inventor. Well, he was. He was, and he, he was, but what he would do... Is he'd hear about things and then he'd make one. That's why he was really good at it. Um, but that's more or less how you had to sort of figure that kind of stuff out. But once he even got a general idea, he would pick it apart and just make one. And he, like in Beaufort, when they moved to Beaufort, he opened the first movie theater there, the Sea Breeze, I think it was called. He opened up his own car company. He built his own car. But... Yeah, he was just, uh, well, Aunt Iris always said he was an inventor. And obviously, the Pauls were smart anyway you want to cut it. So how was he kind of Graydon? That was his daddy. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And Graydon Jr. now, mm -hmm. he went on to become, I, I didn't know him. I mean, I wouldn't even know if I saw him, you know. But, but he, I understand, went on to become a aeronautical engineer. And has built a model, uh, which I've got, Becky Paul had gotten some pictures from him. We had a Davis community display about Luther Paul. Mm -hmm. And she, because Alton, Alton's daddy was Charlie Paul. They called him Tot. And that boat out there, he built that boat under the Gene Dale shed called Tot's Toot. Oh, yeah. That was a fishing boat. He he fished and he took hunters out with it. Um, it was built in the 20s. That's mm -hmm. an old boat, whether anybody knows it or not. But I don't know why he named it Tots, too, though. That was never the name of that boat. He would have never. People, uh, that, I mean, I, I cannot imagine why Jimmy named it that. He, but he was a Murphy, too, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the Murphys, they were a whole no. cast of characters. Under, that was the other name I was trying to think about, was okay. the Murphys. Okay. It was the Murphys, the Davises, the Starns. And that was, you know, they were the main, the Salters. Yeah. There were a lot of Salters in Davis. So I just wanted to, to mark that for for whoever listens to this interview, that Graydon Paul was a honored... I mean, they have a bridge named after him. And he, oh, I know. He rode around know. a double-decker bus telling stories. Yeah, yeah. So he was a true storyteller and character. Yeah, he was, yeah. Did he, he write, sure was. did he publish any stories? In yeah, he they, they, and his wife Mary published a little book. We've got it here somewhere. Okay. Um, and also, I, I may have it over there, and uh, Mabel... Murphy Piner also wrote a book about Davis. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, which you might find interesting. It's got the Pauls in there. She wrote a little thing about it. It's charming. It's a charming little book. I, I think it may not be the most accurate book there has ever been written, but it's interesting. It's very charming little book. It, you know, I guess you could call it a book. It's one of those things that the history place just does in a binder, you know uh, what I mean? I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Um, it's not like a bound book. Yeah. Don't get me wrong there. But and and Graydon and uh, Mary have a little like half page booklet, mm -hmm. and that's around here somewhere, maybe in Davis. I don't know. Did he live across the street from where the Alfonso was? I don't remember where he lived. Okay, no, I so, don't know. Was the Alfonso the precursor to the first maritime? Yes, that's what I'm saying. They had that there, and then you know it was rotting. And Charles McNeil, who apparently worked at Noah Lab, <clears throat> I think. Joanne would know. Anyway, she knew him. And he wanted to start a museum there about whaling. Well, not really about whaling, just about the area, a maritime museum. Yeah. And it was the Mariner's Museum, as far as I know. There was another name to it, can't remember, obviously. Um, but... <clears throat> that stayed there for years. I remember going to that um, when I was a kid after they got the stuff put in there. Um, and then in the 70s, they got the money to redo it into a state organization and got the property in Beaufort and build it. I wonder, <clears throat> do you remember what year that Alfonso burned when they just couldn't? I think it was the 70s. Okay. Okay. Early 70s. So they had to get all that stuff Mid -70s, off. Mid-70s, yeah. And when they got all that stuff off, then somebody found uh, this area where they could put it and call it a maritime museum? Yeah, I think so. I think that I'm McNeil fella. I, yeah, I mean, like I say, I, w I didn't know because I was really little. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Joanne, Joanne Powell yeah. would know. She would tr she would definitely know. Because and she, she, I mean, she worked for the crowd of them 30 years. Yeah. And she and Judy Spitzbergen was there, yep. Dennis's wife. Yep. <clears throat> she and Judy and it's Charles McNeil, and who was also a painter. Cause uh, we've got a picture that he painted of uh, of uh, Henry Piggott. That's yeah. in Portsmouth display. Yeah. So nice. or we've got it. Friends of Portsmouth has it here. It belongs to them. But yeah. Uh, huh. but yeah. It's all tangled up together. This has been fascinating. I've learned a lot. <laughs> I really have. Well, I, I, that, this, what I've related to you are the facts as I know them. Oh, that's what it's so, all about. you know. We all know what we know, so. Yeah. But the Pauls overall, and the Davises too, were very interesting people and, and smart people. Mm -hmm. I didn't get that gene, but mainly they are really smart and know how to do all kinds of things and figure things out. Yeah. I mean, you know, most of us are mechanically inclined for whatever reason. You know, I know people that aren't, and there is a difference. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. but most of us can figure things out fairly easily. Mm -hmm. um, but that's probably the Pauls, because the Pauls were a smart bunch, and the Davises were too. So... Pretty much everybody, my, my grandmama and her husband, of course, was Florence, and I'm talking about daddy's people, uh, his parents, they, well, nobody had anything. You know, it was a depression. But all of his brothers and sisters went on to be very successful people in whatever they were doing. And most of them weren't at Cherry Point, but like dad's, my dad's oldest brother, Larchie, he was, after World War II, went to work for American Airlines as a airplane mechanic and worked for the airlines for, you know, till he retired. Mm -hmm. And then Uncle Don, the next oldest, worked for the NSA. And of course, he was always a weirdo anyway. <laughs> Let me just tell you. Oh, my Lord, when he's strange. So, and he'll be the first to tell you so. But, um, anyway, nobody really knew much about him or where he was. He was in Germany for, well, not 10 years, but close on to it. 
at the height of the Cold War. And and I remember they them talking that grandmama didn't even have because my grandmama was a big letter writer. She loved writing letters. I loved writing letters when I was younger. But nobody knew where he was. So, you know. Anyway, he and my then his daughter Kay wound wound up work for the NSA too. And that's where she met her husband. So we're basically a gang of government employees. Except for me. I never work for the government. I hate the government. But I just want to point out that you're kind of uh, in the following the footsteps of Graydon in that he started the Alfonso and he loved to collect and he loved history. And here you are as <laughs> the collection. Maybe I got the Graydon Paul gene. And I can t- shoot the bull with the best of them. But you are the collections <laughs> person here at the museum. And <laughs> That's true. Yes. So that is true. I never thought about it. Here that you way. are. Yeah. Maybe I'll blame it on Greg Paul. <laughs> that's why I've never made any money in my life. Yeah. No. But that's all right. I, I enjoy this job. Yeah. And Greg Paul's, I mean, I remember Greg Paul very well. And I, because we, most of the time, I, I would, I love to go stay to my grandmama's and I'd spend every weekend over there to Davis. I spent way more time in Davis than I did in Smyrna. So, um,. You know. So anyway, I loved uh, I loved all that crowd, and I'm pretty much like that half of the daddy's half of the Davises who I'm more like. But the rest of them, Chrissy and Michael's like me though. My brother, he's 18 months younger than me, and then but Chrissy and Beth, they're more like <clears throat> Mama's crowd to me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they're real sociable. I'm not bet that say well, you know, if I know you, I'm sociable. Right. But uh, I'm not the most outgoing soul that ever was, and I'm pretty suspicious on top of that. <laughs> so that is a Davis characteristic. <laughs> so, anyway. All right. Well, Pam, is there anything? There it is. And you want to add anything? Any parting thoughts? No, I have no parting thoughts. All right. I don't think I've given you any meaningful information. You absolutely but have. I would ask Joanne because that is funny. I have asked Joanne about all yeah, that. I am going to. I'm going to call yeah. her on the way call home. Call her up. All right. Well, thank you, Pam. This has been fun. I know. And informative. I know. I'm going to have to interview you the next time. <laughs>